email marketing, uh, before I'm asking you the question, I have a problem with email marketing and SMS marketing. Uh, the problem is, oh boy, I, I, I love I, you. I, I don't, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, the problem is, I love, I love these guys. I really love these guys, but the, the bad reputation they have, the email marketing and SMS marketing, I hate this because even in the universal lectures, I'm telling them, uh, I, I've seen more than 300 companies' data so far in my career, and the companies who make the segmentation, personalization, personalization uh, in a good way, uh, email marketing is the top three channel generating revenue. But when we return to the ecosystem, people are telling still email marketing is spamming and et cetera. And I'm telling that you cannot meet with people in their email inbox in the first place. Yes, you can meet with them in the Facebook uh, timeline when they search something on Google, but not email marketing. That's why I have a problem with their bad reputation, but I like these guys because in my, uh, even in MBTM, one of our best performing channels are automated emails. But yeah, at this point, why email marketing is essential for brands and uh, what type of insights we can give uh, the attendees and the ones who are gonna watch, watch this one later? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think we've all, uh... Uh, I think it's absolutely safe to say we've all been vic victims of spam. Uh, I think at least once a day we receive an email that that clearly doesn't bring a smile to our face. Uh, so email is, it's, it's a bit of a curse if it's not used properly. And it's a bit of a blessing if you know how to use it. So transactional emails, you know, for example, are a perfect example of, uh, of why emails are necessary. So if I make a transaction, if I've paid uh, for something online, I'm really looking forward to receiving that email as a confirmation that my payment has gone through. Uh, on the other hand, I might find it a little bit spammy if uh, you know some company talks about a product that I have absolutely no interest in. So big, big, and, and this is really important for newer businesses, for startups, for B2B companies, if you have one campaign that sets a bad precedent, so let's say there's company X that has 350 employees and that's a target company for you. If you decide to run a spammy unsolicited email campaign where out of the 300 employees at your target company, two of them receive an email and they mark you as spam, that company's server is going to block your emails for the remaining 298 as well. So don't, you know, kill the prospect of selling to that company purely because you bought a list or you got uh, a database from somewhere and then you decided to email everyone. So my suggestion would be wait for someone to engage with you at least on what one touch point, at least they know who you are. If there's a context behind your email. And again, in, in the world of sales, it's, it's, it's an ongoing debate. Do you call first or do you send an email first? So it, it might vary. My suggestion is add a third layer, you know, get out of that, uh, that, that whole argument. Send somebody a LinkedIn request. Once they connect, maybe send a one-line email saying, it's great connecting with you on LinkedIn. And I'd like to just leave my contact details here with you in case uh, you know you ever we ever need to talk if you ever get to speak to them on the phone then you'll have the email to latch on to i'm calling because i just wanted to check if you got my email so it's like a sequence you build one step at a time and then you hold on to it so depending on what your business is what kind of personas you're targeting uh, email marketing will remain a very key component 